It's time! It's time! It's Jam Dummy Time! Hi right, guys, it's that time you guys come in the ring with the greatest faction in podcast history, Jazz Freak Wrestling, the JFW Podcast, hosted by Travis D. And I am Nubby, the Amazing Turtle. Hold and on, I, hold on, try yeah. it again, try it again, put a pretty cool title with it. Okay, <clears throat> I am the SCW High voltage champion, two days in a row so far. Nubby, the amazing turtle. There we go. And I am PX Pac Man, the podcast papa, back to one hundred percent. But let's be honest, I've always been at least one hundred and ten. Yay! Yeah, I'm back and better than ever, baby. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better, man. Means you're gonna make uh, two shows this week, huh? Yeah, yeah. I uh, missed Power Hour. I didn't get a chance to uh, go to that on account of a fever. Yeah, you're better off. And uh, had I was supposed to go and meet up with you guys at SCW and had some family stuff that came up, so unfortunately I wasn't able to make it down to Shabans. Um, but I do plan to come to an SCW show very soon. At hey, some point hey, in hey, the Pac-Man. Mo- hey Pac-Man. Hey, hey Travis. Nobody gives a shit about any of this. Well, you know, it's content. It's content. No, it's I'm, we don't, we I'm don't filling dead air. We don't we don't quit talking and we can actually get to fucking content. Oh, that's how that works. Oh, I didn't make the power hour last week. Who gives a fuck? Well, you, it, it came up, so I had to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Did you talk about not being on JFW on the Power Hour last week? Uh, well, I wasn't on the Power Hour last week. You were on the week before. You I, about not be, did you talk about not being on JFW then? No. I I was asked so why, about why my would, general condition. So, but, and, yeah, I was and you said you're fine, and then we can move on. I don't have to hear about where you're not at. I don't give a shit. No way cares. Okay, so oh, if, by the way, good Travis, that's just not happening. I tried it. It doesn't work out. We're, so so I'm moving on. I'm, I'm going back to old Travis. It just works. I'm better off that way. I, think I can't be nice, Travis. And a lot of that has to do with you and all your idiot friends. Hey, I, I'll... I said to shut hey. up. I'm talking. Okay, okay. So I, I watched some video that you posted about fucking uh, uh, inducting GIMP into the fucking LAM, which, hey, way to last two weeks into your, oh, no more induction thing. So, hey, way to commit to that shit. This is why you're single, by the way. Um, but then you fucking uh, have a bunch of other, like, fucking people come in. You have Santino just sit there and smile like a dope. And then you have, uh, what the fuck is the other ones? The Idolizers? The Idolizers. Yeah, she wanders in, and then the other guy wanders in, and they're talking about how they're all fucking... I've never seen so much uselessness in a video in my fucking life. Well, we ha- I will say this. We had very good chicken tenders with Rion skills after that. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, he was he was in there, too. I don't want you to forget that. that oh, no, I saw Rion. Kind of, no, I Rion saw was Rion. in there. No, Rion was there. I just see him. He uh, he took away your uh, your little coat rack gimmick. Oh, he was just moving it out of the way for us. Yeah. He was worried yeah. about it getting hurt. I mean, did you see Damian St. Drew no, all over here's the thing. He, he took it out of there because the most entertaining thing in that entire fucking video was an inanimate fucking object. I mean, hey, that's why he won uh, that Nova Award. Exactly, exactly. The most entertaining thing in your group is a fucking coat rack. You know, Josh is going to hear this in Indiana, and he's going to take this totally out of context. I think you. Oh, he does. 
he's, he's going to be like, Travis said I'm his favorite person on JFW. I finally warmed I up to him. I didn't say favorite person. I said, hey, but you said, but you said, but you said he was, you said that Josh the coat rack was the most entertaining person. I said the coat rack was the most entertaining person in that video, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I, we, we did a lot of videos, so I mean, take In that pick. video, yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. Cause you sit there and you listen to, you talk about the LIM and the other two idiots talk about the Alizers and then the mime who wants to, uh, white girl waste is the best. The one fucking person in that group, and somehow they're the best. Dude, he's the top member of White Girl oh, yeah. Wasted. Yeah. Yeah, he is truly the 1% of that fucking group. He's the top 1%. Yeah. Having 99% of the rowdiness. I just sat there. I'm just like, you know, I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to watch the content, get some entertainment out of it. And then I didn't. And then I realized, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Hey, a, a page view is a page view, so thank you. It is, and you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad you're having fun in pro wrestling. I just wish you didn't do it with a, with a band of idiots. Well, it's a fun band of idiots. Yo, yeah. It's a fun band of idiots. Yeah. I mean, what, what sucked, though, is volume 87 – of Tony Gabagool's yearbook got kind of wrecked by Damian Gray. Yeah. That kind of, that was a damper on the day. Well, but, yeah, that does suck, but, you know, what do you expect when you bring, you know, your personal belongings into a wrestling environment? Well, he wanted him to sign his yearbook, given that mm -hmm. Damian Gray, the yearbook picture, we've all seen it, and he felt, okay, maybe it's it's probably, like, 11 years too late, but maybe I'll get Damian Gray to sign my yearbook. Maybe have a kick-ass summer or something. That's all he wanted. He didn't ask for that. He asked for he, him to sign his you yearbook. Just, you just shoved the yearbook into some dude's face that you know was already annoyed by that existing. So really did to yourself. I have I don't feel any sympathy for Gabagool or his yearbook. The, that's a priceless artifact. That's all I'm saying. Well, it costs oh, like yeah. 20 bucks. Uh, 20 bucks. Twenty dollars. That's how much it cost back in the day. So your that's book like only cost twenty dollars. Twenty dollars in twenty twelve. How much was your year books? I think mine was fifteen. Damn, that was like thirty five, forty bucks. Well, yeah. <laughs> early two thousands were pretty cheap, considering yeah. how shit is now. But yeah, mine's all colored and fucking nice looking and shit, and then they're stored away, so people don't fuck with them. Well, my senior year one was pretty colorful. It actually had, like, actual pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my senior year one, pretty lame. Yellow and blue. I mean, first of all, blue had made no sense with it because they were um, black and gold. So I'm like, what, what happened there? <laughs> Stupid idiots. Perfect. Kind of like the idolizer. Stupid idiots. Stu Damian Gray, stupid idiot who put his hands on me once again, again, unprovoked. I d now, last week you called me out on doing a dance, kind of taunting him a little bit. I was just standing there listening to him. You rant. challenged him. I didn't challenge him. Uh, go back and watch the fucking video, man. You fucking went chest to chest with the dude. I didn't go chest. No, he grabbed, he grabbed oh, no. my shirt. He oh, grabbed dude. my shirt. Oh, you fucking puffed your chest up like you're going to fucking do something. Oh, no, he luckily, grabbed my luckily shirt. Luckily, fucking Maximus O'Reilly came in and saved the fucking day. I don't know if you saw, but he grabbed the collar of my shirt. Oh, no, he definitely did not. You fucking all got a puffy chest and shit. You, 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 you looked him in the fucking eye. Dude, you challenged him, man. I you did. Asked for it. No, he, he grabbed my shirt. That was my natural reaction of just like... This isn't good. I know I'm going to get pushed again or something. Thankfully, Maximus O'Ryan was there. He stood up for me. Um, you know, we did get a chance to show him the picture afterwards. That was pretty cool. Um, Danny, for the record, Damian Gray, I know you're listening. Danny's not, you know, a kid. Uh, he's 23. So, uh, that's like an adult in adult in people years. So just, just keep that in mind. 
Jeez, it's just you got you fucking nerds. I mean, and I'm still waiting. If you notice, General Manager Damian Saint, he does come in there. He doesn't say a damn word about uh, Gray putting his hands on me again. Let's, let's, let's see here. So, so he's yelling at you guys. Here he goes. He grabs your shirt. You get up on your tippy toes. And here's the thing. So, so, and I can't show you it because you won't be able to see it on the camera. But when you go back and look at it, he grabs your shirt. He starts backing you up. As soon as Max Smith comes in and but you still puff your shirt. You fucking puff your chest out behind Max Smith's arrive. Like, let me get at him. And you know you weren't going to get to him. I, you know, at that point when Maximus you, you came are. through, when yeah. Maximus came through, I was just like, okay, this now is going yeah, to Now you had the confidence else. to fucking do something. Now you had confidence. Well, that's the thing. That's why it's my takeaway. Now, oh, something's there's, not, what, and there's Santino in like, the background. Let me get my phone out. I want, oh, I want to be part of something. Fucking nerd. God damn it. Man, then you guys are getting yelled at at Damien Saint. No, he was just yelling at the both of them. We weren't even involved in that conversation. He didn't even acknowledge we were there. Yeah, there's Santino. Oh, let me sit in the background. Let me look at the camera. God, he does, he does not know stage directions whatsoever. He's still looking at the fuck. I did not notice. He's still looking at the fucking camera. Oh, what a nerd. What a but you all you're all just a bunch of fucking nerds, man. Holy hell. Well, it's clear. All I'm going to say, it's definitely not over between me and Damian Gray. That's, that's, okay. It's not over. It's not you're over. You're going to beat him up, Steve? I'm not going to beat him up, but... You're going you're to start challenging people for no reason at all? I mean, all I'm saying is I'm just going there to enjoy wrestling shows, to be a fan, to usher, because that's part of my responsibilities to help with setup. That's all I'm there for. Yeah. I'm not provoking anything. Yeah? So. Hey, Nubby. So. If I was to, if I was to sit here and, you know, have an argument with Freiburg and I tell Freiburg that this isn't over, it's kind of provoking something, isn't it? Well, clearly he seems to think it's not over. So why don't you just make it over? Just say, hey, listen, you do what you want to do. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy being a fan. I got, I got I nothing mean, against look, there's I'm a not little... gonna fight you. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit back. No, you provoked him, man. You provoked him from the very beginning when you got shoved down the first time. All you gotta do is be a fan and just fucking sit there. I mean, well, here's, speak and be as rowdy as they want. They can stand talk all the shit they want. Once they're behind the barricade, they can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. That's, That's where the waiver thing needs to, uh, go away because, uh, yeah, you signed a waiver. To help fix things, put things together. But once you're on that other side of barricade, you are a fan. Mm -hmm. No wrestler, any staff member can put their hands on you unless physically provoked. And I must say, you did not physically provoke Damian Gray. Both times I have not. But if Pac-Man's a part of Rocket Pro, Pac-Man's not a fan anymore. Just because he sits on the audience doesn't mean he's only a fan. Yeah, he's still I wear a lot of hats. I wear a lot of hats. Yeah, but you're not a fan anymore. No, you're still a fan. If you're not an active wrestler, referee, manager, you are considered a fan once you're on the other side of the barricade. What's a what's a manager? You know, define a manager. Define a manager. Define a manager. So someone who's at ringside. You know, who comes out with who comes out with somebody during an entrance for a match? Now Chet doesn't what? wrestle matches, but Chet Chet comes out and you come out with Chet, and he, you involve, and you put yourself around the ring. Dude, you're part of. Here's the thing: you can either be part of Rocket Pro or you can be a fan. Pick one. I mean, here's the thing: I am just gonna try to mind my own business and. You I know, don't believe you. That's the here, thing. I'm gonna try to my. I said try. Are That's you? the key. Are you? Are you? So from this point on, you're trying is you're never gonna make a video talking about Damian Gray. Oh God, no! I'm gonna See? keep running you're my gonna, mouth. You're, yeah, you're gonna. I'm gonna, gonna keep running him. my mouth. It's you're gonna first, provoke Here's him. the thing. First so Amendment. So this is first about, Amendment says I can say no, whatever I want. Don't, don't throw the First Amendment. Don't be that guy. I'm gonna be that guy. Don't be that guy because the thing is. 
you can't sit there and say that like I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything, but I am gonna speak my mind. And then when you get your ass kicked, you can't sit there and play the victim. Then. Well, here's the thing. Then if he's gonna continue to push me and provoke me, that's infringing on my First Amendment. No, it's not. He's not telling you to shut up. He's not forcing you to shut up. You can say he's, whatever you want, but if he kicks your ass, that's on you. I mean, there's a lot of – all I'm saying, Travis, there's a lot of history there, long, yeah. long list of history. I don't need to go into how many times I was pushed into a locker by him. I don't need to go into all of that. Yeah, and unprovoked. He was just I'm, being a bully back then. Okay, so how does that make that's that what I'm No, no, that's what I'm asking. Unprovoked, he was just being a bully. You didn't instigate it. You didn't – exactly. you didn't, you'll go out look for it. He just shoved you into a locker because – you you know he was being a bully, so how is it any different? How how is now saying shit about him going to expect a change in it? If he's gonna kick your ass by not doing anything, you think he's gonna stop because now you're saying something? This whole idea that if you stand up to a bully, they'll back down. You know that's not fucking real, right? I mean, clearly, like for the couple of years that I've been going to Rocket Pro, that he's also been there. And as much as I booed him, I've known he's not going to shut up. He was always that loud mouth, even back in the day. Mm-hmm. But again, we never got into that situation at a Rocket Pro show or at a charity event, as was the case on Saturday, where, you know, I would heckle. I would heckle, you know, any of the heels. I heckled Damien Sane on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Be- and, but Damien Sane never laid a hand on me either way. Yeah, because Damien Saint's not a bully. Damien Gray, he, he, he's, um, he's he's an egotistical maniac and a bully. He's not he's not a bully. Well, he, a, a abusive uh, bully. I mean, he, he did he did uh, hit uh, Nubby with the crossface. What is Kane? What yeah. boss does that? Doesn't seem necessary. No, he's 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 a maniac for sure. But I wouldn't call him a bully. Oh no, he's a bully. That that but was it, bull. But at the same time, there's that clear distinction there. Yeah. Where Damien Saint and I, we each know our role, and Damien Saint's not going to put his hands on me. I'm not going to. Again? Damien Saint. Damien Saint. Damien Saint. Yeah, there's like three Damien's in 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 AEW. Go with with last names. So. Saint won't put his hands on you. But Gray clearly shows that he's not above that. Yeah. So, I mean, I fully expect it to mm-hmm. happen again. I fully do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, I'm not gonna be the one, but I'm not going to be the one that provokes it. I'm yeah. going to just keep doing what I do as a wrestling fan, and that is cheering and booing whoever the hell I damn well please, drink beer, yeah. and when Damien, when Gray comes out, I'm still going to do exactly what I've done before. That's just who I am. Yeah, I I'm not going you, to stop because I love how you think booing and yelling shit at him isn't provoking. Th- that's just the nature of the beast, baby. That's wrestling. Yeah, it, but that's provoking. It, it, just so you know that any fan who boo who boos somebody or yells, it's always provoking. But there is an unwritten rule: wrestlers aren't supposed to touch fans. And fans, yeah, you're allowed to cheer and say everything you want. Even though it's annoying, even though sometimes it's stupid. Not saying you guys, fans in general sometimes just say the stupidest shit. Good example, Rocket Boys say the <laughs> dumbest shit I've ever I, fucking heard I mean, in my life. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah, can get behind that. They're a, they have the right to say whatever they want. But everything they say can be considered provoking when they're doing it. So you can't sit there and say that you're not going to provoke them because when you say shit, whether it be as a fan or not, it's still provoking somebody. The difference is nine times out of ten, you can say what you want because there's no repercussions to it because the wrestlers aren't supposed to do it. So that's where people get this ego and this idea that they can say what they want and do what they want because it's not going to have any, you know, reaction to it. There's no consequence to it. But see, now there is. And that's a possibility now. So you can have your First Amendment right and freedom of speech and say what you want. But when you get your ass kicked, you can't sit there and say, oh, I didn't deserve it or that's uncalled for. Because it is when you provoke somebody. Again, 
I'll just keep doing what I've been doing as a wrestling fan for years, yeah. which to this point has not had anything never have i experienced anything like what i'm dealing with with damien gray but again i'm also as i'm processing everything that's gone on the past month Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of history there that that's leading to a lot of this stuff so this is out of the ordinary nothing so let's say you went to a ufc fight where brock lesnar was wrestling or fighting in the main event and when you walked in, it was said, if you say anything to a UFC fighter, they have the right to beat the shit out of you. What are you going to say to Brock Lesnar? Well, I'm not saying shit to Brock Lesnar. Right? I mean, if it's required not to say anything, yeah. then... If they, if they walk in and say, hey, you can speak your mind, you can say what you want to anybody, but just so you know, they have the right to physically attack you if they don't like what you're saying. I mean, that now see if they're shit like that, then yeah, yeah, I see that. But in pro wrestling, you know the rule. Exactly. That's what there's I'm saying. Talk about it. Yeah. So you, you have the right to say whatever you want because there's the rule and the understanding that the wrestlers are not going to attack the fans based on what they say or what they do. That's why Pac-Man, over the years, you're allowed to be that kind of fan and say what you want because you had this understanding that you weren't going to get harmed, you weren't going to get touched, that you would willy-nilly say whatever the fuck you want and there was no consequences and no repercussions and you'd walk out of there safe and happy and having a good time. But now it's kind of a little bit different for you. I don't think that's because he is attacking a fan. I think it's because he's now attacking part of Rocket Pro Wrestling. Because now you're a staff member sitting in the audience. That's still, uh, you're kind of playing a fine line there because why, it, it, once you're on that other side of the barricade, you still cannot touch anybody on that side of the barricade. You're now, not supposed to. You're not supposed to. No, and, but yeah. if, say, Pac-Man said it to him on the other side, like at rinks, like right by the ring. Well, then, once you're there, you're there. If I opened up those barricades and just walked through in the middle of a match that he's managing, like if I had walked, opened that gate, walked through, um, closed that gate right behind me, walked right up to Damian Gray, then I would get my ass kicked. Right. I know that there might be guys coming out of the locker room that would want a piece of me as I'm getting escorted out of there. Yep. That's See, not, that's, there's a bear, there's a boundary there's, that I respect. Right. So that, it, that is, that is the most cowardly thing I've ever fucking heard, but it's not wrong. That's like, like, that's like you sticking a cattle prod through a gate at a fucking ball, knowing that gate's going to fucking protect you. Well, well, it's we not that the gate's going to protect. It's not that the gate's there to protect. Oh yeah, you, what you then, just as said. As far as bull riding, what you just said. If you walk through that, if you walk through that guardrail in the middle of a match, he'd, yeah, he'd kick your ass. But because you're on your side of that guardrail, you're safe. No, I, what I'm saying well, is, if we if we really look at it all, if I cross that boundary that's set by that gate as a wrestling fan, at any point for any wrestler then I would be kicked out of the venue if I mm-hmm. went and physically provoked one of the wrestlers in the ring while they're performing. I would be, I would get my ass kicked, legit. So there's, I respect the sport of professional wrestling. I would not cross that barricade at any point, no matter how mad I got. Because I respect the sport. I respect the business enough to know better. But at the same time, clearly Damian Gray doesn't respect the other end of that because the respect goes both ways. Where the the wrestlers aren't supposed to physically provoke the fans. Which has happened <laughs> twice. Okay. Twice. Okay. 
How many how many fans has he shoved in his career? As far as I know, I'm the only one. You're the only one. And what should that tell you? Well, he's kind of an asshole. That's what that tells me. Probably means that you are under his skin a little bit more than the average fan. I'll I'll just come out and say it. But nonetheless, you're on the other side of the barricade. Not a roster member. You just help out. And that's it. So fuck Damian Gray. Yeah, fuck Damian Gray. Here, here. here. Right, tra- right, Travis. Yeah. Right, Travis. Say, come on. Say it. you what? could say it. You could you could say it. No, Damian right. listens to the podcast, man. Oh, he can still go fuck himself. Sure. Sure. I'm trying oh, to but, find. I'm trying to find something you said. No, go ahead, Nubby. You're fine. Pac-Man, you yes, again sir. for another month. Uh, you are in charge of the Rocket Pro card of JFW. I will be uh, recusing myself again for that. All right. I got you. I got you. I'll have a lot to say on that card. I'll say it's shaping up to be a great card, but that's all I'm saying. There's a lot of potential slobber knockers on the card, as a uh, good old JR would say. But, um, next- but there's there's also videos that have come out in the past couple of days, which have been quite interesting. Which uh, JFW has called. Yeah, they called it. It's uh, T called it, but as JFW they called it as a whole. I mean. It's definitely, that's definitely going to be interesting um, when it seems like they're, the three rings hacked Rocket Pro Wrestling's Facebook and seemingly they've made their presence felt already. What, what is, I wonder what that means for the show. I don't know for sure. It could just be a hack. Could just be a hack. Going on. I mean, we got the simp. He's the hacker of everything. But, you know, he's a member of LIM, and I trust him now. I don't think he would put that up. Could have. I mean, it's very possible. But, I don't know. When you see the way that a man runs into Tony Gabagool's arms, you sometimes question it. That'll make sense when the vlog comes out. Push me to the ground in front of my family, in front of my friends, in front of the entire Rocket Pro Wrestling Galaxy. Buddy, I want you to know something. This isn't high school anymore, and I ain't that kid anymore. I'm a grown-ass man, and I'm not going to put up with anything that you throw at me. Right now, this is a message to every single idol. Joey Roth, Kevin Case, Roxy Hart, and especially you, Damian Gray. You can keep shoving me down. You can keep pushing me down. But each and every time, I'm going to get back up stronger, faster, each and every single time. No matter how hard and how far you have to push me, every single time, I will find my way back to you. The fun PX has to go away for a second because there's some important business that right now I clearly need to address. And Damien, there's one last thing I need to tell you. It's a bit of free advice that Joey Roth should have given you a long time ago. And it's advice that he knows well. You do not throw rocks at a man with a machine gun, and you do not shove down a man with two cans of old style in his hand. That's just good general advice. You might spill it. That is that is some Steve shit. If I've ever fucking heard it. I could have sworn I've heard Steve say before, you do not throw rag- rocks at a man with a machine gun. It's a great line. Yeah, it sounds like you're challenging him. I'm not challenging him. I'm just but, saying what I'm yeah. saying is simply yeah. that I'm not going to put down, up. Somehow, I'm, somehow I'm not going to put up. Somehow, with you this. laying on the ground is going to make you quicker in life. I don't fucking get it, but okay. Well, I was drunk and a little emotional, but you oh, know, shit, trust me, brother. I can tell. 
But <laughs> you know, I was I was I was freestyling as uh my Oh trust said. me, I yeah, no, I know. But end of the day I think what it boils down to is like yeah. Um because I'm not just standing up for myself. I mean, because he could do that to other fans, too. And I just have to be that fan that says, hey, the shit's not okay. And with there being the history of bullying and such, I think I just felt like I needed to get my point across that, well, you know, I'm not that same kid that you could throw shove in the lockers anymore. Man. It's kind of a shame, though, how Damian Gray was coming at you. Not one of your buddies uh, helped you. Yeah, I think that's. It, they were all really, really shocked about the whole situation, seeing it unfold. Clearly, again. Clearly. I mean, they just, they just stood there and watched. It, it, it just, it, 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 it was. They, everybody was in shock because for that to happen unprovoked, where I wasn't even involved. In what it wasn't happened? Un- no. It wasn't unprovoked. No, I wasn't. Man. I wasn't even. Tony Gabagool was the one that asked him about the yearbook. I didn't put him up to it. I didn't give him five dollars after that just for doing that. I wasn't a dare. Gabagool what, had what, that what gonna, on his own. Was he going to attack somebody holding a baby? Yeah, I don't know. You know, you never know with that guy. That's true. You never know with that guy. Yeah, you can't you can't say unprovoked, dude, man, because you're saying a lot of shit that. But you know. I I was just standing there listening to him, whine and complain and claim that we're stalking him, even though we're supporting Rocket Pro. He just so happened to be there, and then as I was just sitting there and listening to him, he grabs my the collar of my shirt, mm-hmm. And thankfully, Maximus was there to break it up before the situation escalated even further. Um, and then, you know, you don't see it on camera, but he kind of brushes right past me again. Almost knocked me off my feet brushing right past me yeah. as he's walking away. And yeah, he's still, yeah. and, he, and he's threatening me to boot, because if you go back and watch the video, he keeps saying that a push isn't going to be the only thing that you're going to be dealing with, if you think that's the worst thing. Something to that effect. So clearly, for him, me, I would just like to chill, watch some wrestling, not worry about being physically provoked. But there he comes, and he's still making threats and stuff. So clearly, for him, it's not over. You know, it amazes me that people think like like I'm the piece of shit in the world, but I have yet to ever be threatened while sitting in a wrestling, you know, crowd. See, Damian Gray is a special kind of asshole. That's the I takeaway. Mean, he's he's the one that you eventually pissed off, man. But it's cool. It's cool that you can say what you want to say, man. It's fine. You know, live your life the way you want to live. It makes sense why you're on the Power Hour now. Because you and Steve are literally one in the fucking same. But the only difference is, is when Steve steps up and says shit, he's willing to step in the ring and back it up. And if you want to say what you want to say, you got to be willing to do the same thing. Give me a lot to think about. Again, Travis, twice, twice, two weeks in a row, giving me a lot to think about here. Well, I say what I say because first off, you're annoying as fuck. Thanks, buddy. But at the same time, I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Uh, th- thanks, buddy. Yeah, you know, just, just you know, in- enjoy, enjoy your freedom of speech, man. But consequences come with what you say. Everyone, anyone can fucking tell you that. Nubby can tell you that. Steve can tell you that. Fucking Rion. Anyway, Even- when, when when you say things, at Actions have consequences, and what you say is considered an action. Not just a physical thing, but a verbal thing as well. I mean, you know that firsthand, too. Yeah. Yeah, I said a lot of stupid shit to the workhorses when I hosted IPW, and they jumped me afterwards. If I would have been the bigger man, the better man compared to them, but, I mean, that's not hard to do. If I would have just, you know, ignored them, I never would have got beat up. But I did, because I ran my mouth. Yeah, I still think you would have got beat up anyway, because... It was you were an easy target at the time. 
That's true. I am uh, I am no different in size than than Pac Man, yeah. Well I'm pretty not, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty much five four. You are yeah, my co on JFW, so I yeah. think you have to get to me. Yeah. I love when I was listening to when I was re- uh replaying that video by the way you're looking down and doing whatever and shit and me and uh, nubby had a good laugh at you saying i'm a phone grown man so well you know i'm a grown ass man yeah yeah <laughs> all right uh real quick uh nubby and i tied on uh no yeah yeah nubby and i tied on no mercy and pac-man you won uh russell dream yes Hey, did you see that Adam Copeland guy? I, I, he looks very familiar. I think I know. <laughs> yeah, I watched the uh, press conference and everything on it. And, uh, you know, it's weird because a lot of people are talking. Like, well, fucking was it Nubby? Were you the one that shared uh, the message? Yeah. Talk about that for a minute. I'm curious about that. All right. Uh, let me pull this up right quick. Um So this idiot from, uh, of course, I didn't screenshot the whole thing. Let me go back to the message. I don't know. I got him on Twitter now, so or X now, whatever. Fuck you. X gonna it. give it to you. It's gonna give it to you. X gonna give it oh. to you. So some idiot. He runs this Jobber Nation TV. The reality check for the IWC, whatever the. Fuck it is. Basically, he's one of those nut jobs on social media that likes to think he's a podcast on some shit. I don't know. But uh, he's been talking shit all day. Not all, not to be confused with Marche. But so he says, I woke up this morning and realized that I overreacted last night. The edge stuff and the Chiefs getting handed a win by the Rouse. Oh, shut the fuck up about that football game. Chiefs are a good team. Shut up. Um, after thinking and evaluating everything, I've come to this conclusion. Edge is the biggest traitor in WWE history. I will no, no longer acknowledge anything he's done in WWE. It's not the fact that he went to AEW. It's how he did it. He used WWE... Buried everyone, demanded a lot of money, TV time to the detriment of younger stars and trash WWE fans the first chance he got. Oh, really? Okay. (laughs) I shit all over that one right there. So, why? Yeah, did you guys hear anything about him shitting on WWE? No. No. No, I listened to the press conference. Um, first off, I mean, the debut was kind of pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. But one of the biggest, you know, from the press conference, I don't know if you guys had a chance to listen to it at all or anything, but it, it sounds like the biggest reason he went to AEW over WWE is because he's going there to be a full-time wrestler again. He's not there, you know, every, like, three months or some shit. He's going there full-time. Um, they already announced that he's going to be on Dynamite Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, collision on Saturday, and he's actually having his first match the following Tuesday because uh, AEW is going to be on this kind of kind of like title Tuesday or whatever. Um, I think it's October tenth. That's right. I think so. Uh, yeah. Um, and he's facing Luchasaurus, but uh, I don't think it was a money thing. I don't think it was you know a you know like a fuck you to WWE in any way. I think it was just the fact that. He wanted to be full time. That he wouldn't make him full time, and I honestly I don't want him to be full time. I got I got enough of Edge in his first run. It was cool to see him come back, and the only reason it was cool to see him come back is it wasn't because of him as a character. It was because of overcoming the odds of not being able to come back. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. But we, we've talked about Data E like so much as far as the roster and everything, and they're so saturated with fucking talent that already doesn't get, you know, TV time. Like, I don't want to, I don't need to see another edge match, you know, and yeah, Duke can still go, and that's great. AEW is probably the best place for him because there's different people, and I don't see this whole, uh, what did guys say, uh, taking, taking, uh, other people's spots? Yeah. Yeah, it's, 
I, I get what he's saying, but I mean, like, fucking, like, I, booking matches at wrestling shows. No, but you've done the same thing. Is it really that hard to th- add an eight minute fucking match anywhere? No, that's no. not hard. That's, that's the one thing I never understood about people saying, like, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, you have this guy, but, you know, he's taking spot of somebody else. It's like, no, you can always, you can always add a fucking match. You can always adjust times and everything. It's like, hey, listen, if you take 45 seconds away from every single fucking match, you know, and add a couple minutes, you get another eight minute match out of the fucking show. You know, it's like, I, I was so concerned, like, when I was looking at the, you know, and again, for those who are listening, nothing against SCW or WrestleTopia in any way. When I first looked at the roster, at that match card, and I was like, fuck, there's 14 matches that are happening. In my mm-hmm. mind, I was like, we're going to be there until, like, midnight. No, we still got out around, like, 1030. Yep. Every match was great. Every match told a story. Nobody's time was cut, you know, at least from my perspective. It wasn't shortened. Nothing. Every match was incredible. And we still got out of there by 1030, which is the average time. Yeah, it seemed longer because we added an hour for high voltage and shit. But we weren't there until midnight shit, you know? And so I don't, I, I don't like when people say it's like, oh, you know, he's taking away, a, you know, the spot of another guy. He's like, he's not. You know, Edge had like, what, two title opportunities, you know, when he came back. Um, a lot of it was just him fucking, you know, wrestling, you know, uh, up and comers and helping up and comers and comers and all that shit. He just wants a spot where he could be a full-time wrestler. And Daddy just doesn't want him to be a full-time wrestler. So I don't think there's, I mean, and I, I, I read his tweets, you know, he did like a four tweet series explaining how, how much he appreciates Daddy, how much he appreciates what they've done for him, you know, and he, so he did the right thing, but I don't think he used Daddy to get more money or any of this shit. Fucking Khan's going to overpay anybody. Yeah. That's just who he fucking is. He can do that. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this guy. It's like, cool, great. You just got another Hall of Famer, you know? That's awesome. You have another guy who can come in and wrestle MJF and, you know, do some shit with Christian Cage and, you know, Kenny Omega and all. That's awesome. That's great for fucking Edge. I just don't need to see it. So for him not to be back in WWE, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. I want Braun Breaker up on the main fucking roster. I want to see Johnny Gargano wrestle more fucking matches. I want Ciampa to actually have a title run at some point, too. I want L.A. Knight to have a fucking title. Like, there's already guys there who are very similar in age to fucking Edge. You know, a little bit younger. They're newer. They're more exciting to see. Just because when you bring Edge in to wrestle a guy, nine times out of ten, if it's a newer fucking guy, Edge is probably going to fucking win this for the main event. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just don't really see it anymore. There's also that thing where a lot of his friends are in AEW right now. And he knows that he's winding, he's going to pretty much wind down his career anyway. He yeah. wants to be with his friends. Most guys do that. Like Jeff Hardy, you know, I, even though he had his own issues, I know he went to AEW because he wants to be with his brother. Mm-hmm. Now there's a chance that we could see one more ladder match with the Dudleys, if Devon can do it, in the Hardys and, you know, Edge and Christian. If not, I'm okay with not seeing it for the eighth time or whatever. But to call him, like, a traitor, um, do you remember back in the day, Monday Night Wars, WWF versus WCW, where everyone was pretty much going back and forth? Xbox did it. Jeff Jarrett did it twice. It happens. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with going to the other side. Mm -hmm. I I don't see him as a traitor at all. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm actually more older now, and I've been through that shit. But even when I was a kid back then, I never thought that. I thought it was cool when fucking somebody went to WCW from (sighs) WCW. It was cool as fuck. It made me want to watch WCW more. Does Edge going to AEW make me want to watch AEW more? Mm, not really. That's just because it's Edge. I mean, I have nothing against him. I, I enjoyed him when he came back. It sucked that it 
he came back at the wrong fucking time when the pandemic hit. That yeah. fucking the damper on his comeback. I I know that for sure. Mm-hmm. It, but for him to be called a traitor, get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. It, the, the only thing that's weird about it, and I, I do want to hear from Pac-Man, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm trying to avoid it. Um, I, the, the only weird thing about it is it's the whole Hall of Fame thing. <clears throat> That active dirty Hall of Famers wrestling in AEW. That's a little bit goofy to me. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, they shot themselves in the foot when they inducted him at, what, 34 years old or some shit? It was like a year after he... A year after, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like... I I mean... Hit it. Yeah. Whatever. But look, look at all the other Hall of Famers and shit that are in AEW. You know, Mark Henry, Jake Snake Roberts and shit like that. Sting. Sting. I don't think anyone's calling them fucking traitors. When it came to Sting, it was very similar to Edge, except for obviously Sting was injured. Mm -hmm. You know, know, they didn't want to, you know, risk it anymore. So he went to AEW. They didn't want Mark Henry wrestling anymore. He went to AEW. You know, yeah, they wanted Edge, but Edge wanted it full-time. They wanted to give him part-time. Fucking AEW. Brock Lesnar walked out, went to UFC. Goldberg came and went, what, four fucking times? You know, they just, they, they know what they want to do. They know who they want to utilize. It's just not Edge. It's not Edge full fucking time. No, uh, Pac-Man, what are you thinking? So, I mean, going back. What are you freaking thinking? What am I, what am I freaking thinking? What are you freaking thinking? So, here's what I'm freaking thinking. You know, so, you know, you know what that's a reference to? What is it? A, what is it? A freaking reference to? Oh, you jackass! I thought it was to just freaking clearly, wrestling. <laughs> clearly, clearly not listening to this freaking show. Ah, so now I'm going to tell you what I'm freaking thinking. Yeah, tell me what you're freaking thinking. Okay, so here's what I'm freaking thinking. Now the traitor thing. Going back to that. Um, I work at a college. I was previously working at another college. Yeah. So I left that other college about a year ago because I had a really good opportunity mm-hmm. yeah. to make some money. Um, what is somebody is one of my students going to say, Oh man, he's a traitor because he went to this other place. No, I need to make a living. Exactly, yeah. And it's like the same thing with wrestling. Now there's a lot more competition with professional wrestling. There's a lot of different companies that are available uh, for wrestlers to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, we haven't had anything like this since, like, WCW. You know, I'd even go as far as TNA as well. You know, look at Kurt Angle. Nash, you know. So everybody's got to work. For one thing or another. Uh, it doesn't matter really the brand you support. If you want to support a brand, that's great. I mean, all in all, I say I support all of pro wrestling, no matter the brand. I don't really necessarily have a brand that I identify as. I don't think anybody's stupider for following the brand that I may not prefer as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all have our different case so it's just like that tribal mentality in wrestling is the one thing that drives me nuts and it's like such a big part of like that toxic if people you know some people talk about you know wrestling culture being toxic and that's you know clearly um you know one of those things that that it's 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 unnecessary because everybody needs to work everybody needs to feed their families at the end of the day yeah i uh, my my only problem with uh, wrestling business, and a lot of it has to do with a, a small part of it is the talent. It's the mm-hmm. actual wrestlers, but the biggest part is is a lot of the fans who speak about shit they don't know nothing about. Like that's the part that sucks the most. Um, you looking at the you looking at the SCW chat? I'm going to tell you right now, I hate that that fucking thing goes off so much. I'm really going to fucking leave it soon. <laughs> like, I have no I have no reason to be in it. I just need to talk to fucking Hunter and Creed, and that's it. Everyone else I don't need to have any conversation with. Um, but every time I just keep bleeping in my ear, I'm just like, I, I, I know it doesn't come through the fucking podcast. I've checked it. It doesn't. But the fact that I hear it, I hate it. 
Um, it's the fans who talk about the shit they know nothing about. It's like, you know, like they just they just want to go based on rumors and what they hear or what they want to believe and shit like that. And it happens on, you know, the WWE, AEW stage, but also happens in independent wrestling. Oh, so so does not work for this guy because of this, this, and this. Like, you don't fucking know that. Rumors like uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon uh, getting a divorce. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, just, it's people who want to fucking create content for clicks and, you know, fucking, like, you know, views and shit like that. And, hey, you know what? Run your business the way you want to run it. Do your shit the way you want to do it and everything. But it, know about what you're fucking talking about, you know? And, and, you know, we're guilty of it, you know? And it goes back to the that that wrestle night goofy thing that we misspoke about. But it's because we, you know, we unfortunately just... You know, read and we read what we saw online and just rolled with it. I don't I mean, think we're, we're fall. I don't think we're fall off from what happened, but we I mean, we weren't completely wrong. But yeah. there's some things that w- weren't all talked about, so yeah. Yeah. we weren't given all details. But yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah. As far as uh, the wrestlers and shit, the only thing I don't like is when. Somebody talks bad about another company that they have no business even talking about to begin with. Mm-hmm. There. Um, yeah. yeah, the two biggest examples I could talk about is one that happened a while back and one that actually happened over the course of this past weekend. And it was about people commenting on, I guess, the quality of championship titles. I know where you're going with that. Yeah. Um if you guys know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going into detail about it and everything. But when you sit there and you, you talk about how, like, oh, you know, this is cheap, that looks cheap, this isn't, you know, that's not pretty, that's not, it's like, it's like, dude, like, unless you're holding that fucking title, you don't know the quality of it. To sit and to sit there, you're being, and all you're trying to do is just belittle another fucking wrestling company. Mm-hmm. And it, it's fucking stupid. You know, it's like, I can, I can understand. You know, like if you're a booker and you got heat with another fucking booker or, you know, somebody did something shitty to you. And the more I'm in this business, the more I hear stories about this guy and this girl and that guy and that girl and this group of people and that federation and shit like that. And you know, I take everything, I, 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 I take everything with a, with a grain of salt depending on who it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Cause there's very few people that I really trust the information that comes from them. Nubby, I trust. Hunter, I trust. Uh, Steve, I trust. Like, like the guys who I know won't bullshit me and lie to me and everything. I'll listen to what they have to say. But don't go on fucking social media and just spew bullshit because you think you're able to do so because you think a you know that can affect somebody's fucking you know company or that can affect somebody's fucking booking. Because, you know, what's going to stop any booker to say, hey, listen, if that's the kind of people you associate with, I don't want you over at my company. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, I was like, hey, I saw that so-and-so said this, but I saw you said nothing about it. And Shane does. Like, well, you know, even if you don't want to get involved in it, they feel like you need to get involved in it. You know, and nothing against, you know, nothing against any company, but I'm never, I will never say that one company is better than another. They're not going to. Every company is great in its own unique, different ways. Whether it be the talent that they have, or the production that they have, or you know the 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 uh, the um oh god, what the hell am I trying to think of here? Uh, the stuff they do other than wrestling at the events and shit. Uh, I guess a good example: Rocket Pro Wrestling, great production. They have great talent. Uh, the fan access thing they're doing is incredible. SCW incorporating high voltage, you get the developmental guys a chance to wrestle inside, you know, crowds, you know, an audience and stuff like that. Uh, everyone has their own unique thing that they do that makes them really cool. But I'm never going to sit here and say that one company is is better than another. Not one company is the top over everyone else. And I'm not going to do that. And if people have a problem with that, that's on them. That's not on me because I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be told. You know, they, oh, well, you know, if you want to work here, you should say something. You know, you should, you should say that we're the best and, you know, the, and say, no, I'm not. Because first off, I'm not going to create friction with other people. And I'm not going to, you know, you know, say a bunch of shit that I don't need to fucking say. I don't need to say. And here's the thing. And I work for SCW and I love SCW and SCW is great. 
you know, but I'm not going to sit here and say that SCW is the greatest fucking company in the world because there isn't a greatest fucking company in the world. Every company has its positives. Every company has its fucking negatives. I'm not going to get into what those are, but I love SCW because of the opportunities it's given me, because of the opportunities I get to do there and have fun. And yes, that is my, that's my home. You know, just like Pac-Man's home is Rocket Pro Wrestling. Nubby, I don't know where your fucking home is. It's in the it's in the sewers. It's in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> the sewers can lead every company I work for. <laughs> um, the sewers but, from every company I work for. Yeah, but see, and that's the thing. But that, that's the beautiful thing about Nubby. It's like he doesn't need to find a home. He's crushing it at SCW. He's crushing it at Crash Test of Wrestling. Crushing it at IPW. Still involved in CSW. Rocket Pro, you know, you know, well, whatever, you know, that's not Damien Saint, you know, it's, you know, I can't blame Rocket Pro, it's only Damien Saint's fault, and I still respect you, buddy, but, you know, bad call, but, like, yeah, I'm not, you know, it's, if, if my decision on what I say and everything is, you know, going to affect going anywhere else, then so be it, but I'm not going to say shit to cause friction, like, all these other people want to because they want to, you know, cause, you know, they want to instigate, you know, fucking altercations or they want, you know, they want to start, you know, fucking problems. I just, you know, I, I mean, fucking Steve said it before, like I stir the pot and shit like that. And I say things to, you know, you know, piss people off or whatever the fuck it is. And it's not, it's just me being completely honest because I'm not going to sit there and, you know, kiss somebody's ass or, you know, belittle. I mean, yeah, I, I fucking mock people and I belittle people like fucking, you know, Chavez and workhorses and Me. stuff like that. Yeah. Don't do that. It looks like you're fucking jerking off. Would you fucking just sit there? <laughs> I was pointing. It's the, it's the yeah, background yeah. that I have. Do it, do it again. And Nubby, tell me what it looks like he's doing. No, no, do it, do it as fast as you were doing it. I'm pointing at myself really fast. Does that, does that look like he's pointing at himself really fast? No, I'm not going to demonstrate yeah, what it looks yeah, like otherwise. Yeah, but yeah, no, it, it, it looks like he's rubbing out a green screen. Is what he's fucking doing. Yeah, Pac-Man's a good example. I yeah, I, I poke fun at fucking everyone, but as a gimmick, why the hell wouldn't I? You know. Um, but yeah, no, the same with you know, Adam Copeland. If he wants to wrestle in AEW, he has every right to do it. And if people are pissed about it, that's on them. You know, Adam's going to make his fucking paychecks. He's going to sleep well that fucking night, you know, with his amazing wife and his wonderful kids. And he's going to go out and have fun with Christian Cage and, you know, FTR and all those fucking people. And if you want to sit there to heap a trade WWE and everything, it's like, I hope to God you said the same fucking thing about uh, Athena, about Paige, about Tony Storm, about Ruby Soho, about Chris Jericho, about Dean Ambrose. Um, about Sting, Arn Anderson, Jake Roberts, fucking all of, uh, Undisputed Era, Smoa Joe, Cody Rhodes, Cody, he was there. Yeah, he is. Say, say whatever. If you say it about Edge, you need to say about all those other fucking people. Mm-hmm. Because that is their roster. It's a bunch of former WWE guys and, and New Japan guys and Ring of Honor, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, you can't sit there and just get pissed at fucking Edge, Adam Copeland, however you want to refer to him as, just because he went somewhere else. He wanted to do something, they to E wouldn't agree to it. So there you go. I don't know how many years he's, I don't know what his contract is. So I don't know how many years he's going to be full time, but as far as I know, he's full time. He's going to be, as Tony said, he will be at AEW every single week doing what he's doing. So fine. Let him fucking do it. But don't be a petty bitch just because you think that he betrayed WWE. WWE is still going to move fucking forward. You know, those those wheels are going to keep fucking grinding, you know. And now that they're merged with the UFC and they're, uh, what is it, like $13 billion or whatever the fuck it is now? So oh I'm sure gonna, yeah, I'm sure they're going to do just fine without fucking Copeland. You know, I'm okay not seeing an edge match, you know, at every four big fucking pay-per-views a year. I'm okay with it. And I love Edge. I The one thing I hope for right now is that the Edge and Christian podcast comes back because that was entertaining as fuck, and I would love to see that again. Oh, that show was amazing. So I'm glad he's over there for that reason alone. I hope to God it comes back. I may tweet about it. 
Um, just in the hopes that maybe I'll get a retweet. Now, Scarlet and Karrion Cross retweet like shit. So it's pretty fucking, I mean, it's shit about them, but they still do it. It's pretty fucking cool. Um, they might be my next best friends next to my best friend, uh, Max Holiday, which shout out to Max Holiday, my BFF. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You guys got anything else you want to add about Copeland? I feel like I went on a very, very long, extensive, unnecessary rant. The other thing that I'd want to bring up to any fan that is like, thinking with this WWE versus AEW mindset. <laughs> so, <laughs> got me. I was I was ready to go with it. But what do Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Luchasaurus all have in common? They've mm. all been in WWE at some point or another. I think that speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, people, fucking uh, Nubby said it uh, earlier, you know, people jump from businesses to businesses. X-Pac did it, Jeff Jarrett did it multiple times. Mm -hmm. Austin, fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin started in WCW, for those who didn't know that. (gasps) Cactus Jack, The Undertaker, Triple H, they were all WCW guys at one fucking point. Edge was in WCW at one point. Edge, yeah. Damon Stryker. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All these fucking dudes were fucking WCW guys at one point. You know, people, people move, people leave. Fucking look at, uh, Sunny. She was in WCW, ECW, and NAF. AJ Styles. AJ WCW Styles. WCW as well. Yeah. Ring yeah. of Honor, New Japan. If Edge, went to New, if, if Edge went to New Japan, would this be as big of a deal? Or is it a big deal because it's AEW? It is because of it's, it's AEW. Yeah, just because they, it's AEW. They don't want to admit it. Yeah, they're pissed. That's all. Yeah, but he, he's let, let him enjoy his life. Let him, you know, you know, if you don't, if you don't like him, you want to boycott him. Fucking boycott him. He doesn't give a shit. You're an idiot for doing it, but hey, go ahead, do it. Yeah, it's like uh, that phrase from Bronx Tale. Adam Copeland doesn't give a shit about you, like Mickey Mantle. Uh, we got a couple of match cards to talk about. There are really no results to go over. We did the SCW live stream uh, last uh, yesterday. That is released and available to be listened on all uh, podcasting platforms if you want to go back. We had a lot of cool people on. Uh, you know, uh, First off, we talked to uh, the new High Voltage Champion, who also uh, co-hosted it with me, Turtle. His hey, form... Bro. Uh, former high voltage champion Freiburg was on there, uh, throwing a fit. Yep. Um, um, his buddy, uh, I don't know, Rocco, Ros- Sh- Sheriff, Sheriff Roscoe. Yeah. Another, uh, troll. Yeah. Yeah, he said, he, he said, he said I was picking on him and shit, but he's the one that's calling me a dictator. I didn't get the Banana Republic thing. I thought that was like a, and that like a fucking like like sunscreen or some shit. It's a clothes store. Clothing store, yeah. They sell what like Hawaiian shirts or some goofy shit. Pretty much, yeah. yeah I guess uh, we're gonna Hawaiian shirts to SCW. I guess so. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, good good for him for you know being a fan of Freiburgs and shit. But I mean, you're the you're the one. And we you're found Freiburg. <laughs> And not only that, or you are so wrong about everything you said. Oh yeah, he's he's SCW's white girl wasted. <laughs> yeah, he hides he hides behind everybody. He's I still want to put a face to the guy along with uh, uh, Mr. Wrestling One Fan and Stiff Bip who are probably the same yeah, people. Okay. Uh, Idiots. Yeah. Come say yeah. this to my face. I will, I, will, family. I, will, I will say this though. And this should probably make Pac-Man and the LIM really happy. You don't know you truly made it until somebody starts fucking shitting on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Pac-Man, you should be fucking proud because oh, I... cause if, you, if you're being shit on by a guy who's being shitted on, that's an exception of shit. Man, or just the shit. That's yeah. all, that's all that means. Right? <laughs> right? The only difference is, is like, I get shit on by my greatness and, well, you're you. But um, that's true. I am myself. That's right. You are you. You are a grown ass man, kinda. Yeah. Fuck 
fucking god damn it. Okay, if you're listening to this, fucking Tommy Gunn, for love of fucking God, don't message anyone in that chat between 6 and 8 p.m. every Monday. <laughs> this fucking dude. I mean, I, I'm just trying, I love his ambition, but for the love of fucking God. Oh, I have a great idea for high voltage. Don't care. Idiot. Um, but hey, solid win on the Battle Royal, by the way. Awesome. Fucking Russell, to- uh, Russell Topia was fan fucking tastic. I had a, I had a conversation with, uh, Hunter last night about it. And we're not gonna, I'm not gonna get into any of the matches up again. Listen to the live stream. But I had a conversation with Hunter yesterday about it. And I, I just asked him simply, like, so, how did you feel about Russell Topia? And he even said, I think it was the best one yet. And I 100% agree. First off, best one yet because fucking the Amazing Turtles new, uh, SCW High Vault is champion. Yeah, he is. Uh, for the love of God, Hunter, do not. Me- <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Did <laughs> 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 it? Was that a message about me? Yeah. Oh God, fuck yeah! Of course they complimented me. It's me. Um, he said he loved. He said it was the best one yet, and I agreed with him. First off, because uh, I kept my promise to Nubby, I got him uh, a, a true, honest, high voltage championship uh, title shot. And uh you took a positive advantage of it, won the title. Congratulations to you for that, man. Uh Secondly, when you look at the card, and I do have it over here with me, and you look at it from top to bottom, how many SCW-trained wrestlers are on that card is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just goes to show, like, the next generation of fucking talent. You know, and it, it, it's cool to see because, it's like, obviously I don't do any of the training myself, and, you know, I'm not – other than like helping like with like gimmicks and stuff, I don't do a lot, you know, ring related. But it's almost a sense of pride where it's like, yeah, you know, like I here, I mean, Creed was like one of the first ones. JPH a little bit too. It's like I, I've I've been involved in these guys' lives since the beginning, you know. And you know, some some you're proud of, and some you're just like, God damn it, about like you know Freiburg. Um, <laughs> but it, it's it's just really cool that like you know he sits there in almost every match had, like, an SCW-trained person in it, and it was fantastic. And the fact that uh, I was able to coordinate it with Terry Terry Allen and uh, the board and allow non-SCW-trained people into High Voltage to, you know, kind of, you know, upgrade the, you know, the challenge, if you will, uh, is fantastic. Uh, so... Nubby, again, congratulations on winning the title, man. You definitely deserve it. And for those of you out there who believe Freiburg was screwed, uh, I'm working on a video for you. And uh, I will hopefully release that sometime this week. I just want to pull a little montage uh, together for you of uh, Freiburg's run so far in uh, SCW. And you can tell me if he truly is the innocent guy that he is. So here, here's a little fun fact about that yeah. before I went out there. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going through me, what where, what happened with my body. But when I was standing at, my, at the entranceway, now, mind you, I do get nervous. Sometimes I get that feeling of throwing up. Mm-hmm. But that's a lot with my nerves and my stomach and everything. This time, it was in my throat. Like, literally ready to throw up. Like it felt like the dry heaving kind. I don't know what happened, how it started, but I was really close to not making it out there because I got freaked out about it. I thought I was going to throw up right there, but somehow when I went to the end, when I went through there and started running around, I was fine. Yeah, my mind, I kept thinking, "Am I going to puke in the middle of the ring?" And when I first, and I was looking at the pictures, and you could actually, like, see it in my face that I was forcing myself to, you know, just fight through whatever was in me. Because normally I'm jumping around, smiling and shit, but, like, the first few pictures that are out there, it, you could see it in my eyes that I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? But I fought through and became champion, so fuck you, Freiburg. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was, 
it, it, it was a, it was a good match. Um, I think out of the three you guys had, it probably was the best one. And and one positive thing I can say, and nobody you could agree with me or not, uh, this is your you know your choice, but the fact that it was him out there by himself at least proves that he's capable of at least getting through a match almost to the end on his own. Mm-hmm. Um, I I mean I I had total faith in you. I mean I obviously there's a little bit of doubt of what if, you know, but I mean. I think I, I had like 95% confidence in you to fucking pick up the victory just because, I mean, come on now, fucking nearly 20 years of fucking wrestling knowledge, you, you know, you're going to fucking find a way to overcome and win whatever you do. You know, that's been proven through, you know, your years of wrestling um, and the knowledge you have in it. But it, it, it shows me that at least if Freiburg still keeps working at it, because he is still fairly new in the business, as long as he keeps working at it and maybe has a better fucking attitude, that maybe one day he could actually win a match on his own without fucking help. He hasn't yet, and that's the fucking problem. So it wasn't. So he wants to sit there and he wants to look at the whole like you know Sheik and Schultz not being out there as a fucking punishment. Dude, take it as a life lesson. You know, you you now know where you stand as far as your wrestling abilities. You know, you went out there, you were by yourself. I put you against a near twenty year vet. Okay, you couldn't get the job fucking done. So keep working at it. You want to say I'm a fucking bad guy? I'm not, and I didn't screw Freiburg over. So, uh, pounds this weekend. Phoenix Pro Wrestling is this weekend. Uh, I've been talking for a little bit. I'm gonna take a a quick break from that. Uh, so, which one of you is doing pow? I'll do pow. Go for it, man. So, pow Entertainment has a show this Saturday. And where are we going? Oops, clicked out of it. Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there it is. So, they are back in Fox Lake, Illinois, 703 North Route 12. Doors open at 6 p.m. Bell time is 7 p.m. Ah. Front row reserve seats are still available. Um, only 25 as of last night, but they could be almost gone now. They are uh, $20 in advance by using the link on their Facebook page. They have some deals for one to two, three, or four tickets. General Mission is also available via the links for $15. And their special... Again, four tickets for so much and three tickets and so on. All right. Already signed. For the POW Heavyweight Championship, it is Moondog Murray, the champion, against Jimmy Blaze. Now, mind you, he, Jimmy Blaze was in that tournament. Didn't make it through, but Moondog decided he wanted to give a title shot to him before, you know, Russell Rage. When he, or it could be Jimmy Blaze. Going against Kazile at Russell Rage. You never know. For the POW Midwest Championship, we got champion Tommy McGough taking on Mateo Valentine. For the POW Tag Team Championships, we got the champions, the Irish Pub Army, IPA, versus uh, the Reckonings with Chris Hedford, Sean Priest and Acid Jazz. Uh, which, by the way, uh, don't, I hope you all didn't forget, Acid Jazz does hold the keys to the kingdom. He does. I don't think he cashed any of those in yet, did he? No, he hasn't. Not that I'm aware. Then, we also have more members of the Reckoning, or at least one of them is a member. I don't know about this other guy, but Tyler Sullivan of the Reckoning, will be teaming up with Jason Dukes against Holly Tomaselli, and I can assume he'll be ready and back from injury. Your cousin, Acid. Oh, shit. Mike's, uh, Mike's going to be at uh, Powell, huh? Uh-huh. Ah, oh, man. I wish, wish it was somebody would told me. Is this in Lombard? I, I, I missed the location. Oh. Fox, Fox Lake. Lake. Yeah. 
a little bit too far for me. Pac-Man, go there and report back. Maybe. Yeah, you gotta fucking go. I mean, if I'm allowed, because I'll be in the area that night. For Ooh, other yeah. uh, I Wait, mean, where is that? I'll be there in, in the area for other reasons. I'll be in um, Gurney for a special trip to, to Six Flags. But is, it, is, it, is Fox Lake, is that northwest Illinois or southwest Wisconsin? Um, Illinois. Is that Illinois? So, yeah. I know because I know Powell does like a Wisconsin fucking location too. I just can't remember what all it is. They were, um. Oh, yeah, okay. Wind Lakes up there. Okay, there we go. Too many fucking lake towns. Yeah. Um, In singles action, we got Hunter Payne versus Logan Steele of The Reckoning with Chris. My dog, Hepburn. Uh And that's all the matches listed as of right now. This is the road to Russell Rage 21. Do not miss the hottest ticket in town. Again, this is POW Entertainment. October 7th, Saturday. In Fox Lake, American Legion, 703 North Route 12. Doors open 6 p.m., bell time 7 p.m. Nice. Any responses to that, Pac-Man? Be there or be there. There are a lot of words I wish I could say to you, except it's 2023 and they can't be said anymore. Uh, there's one thing. There's one thing I do need to ask you, Travis. Yeah, sure. What's up, man? I'm a little disappointed. In Pac-Man? I mean, yeah, sometimes, you know, me too. Um, you, very disappointing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, Carter Comics. It's got time. Got time? It's got time. Okay. it will be fine. It'll be, it'll be Okay. <laughs> Pac-Man, do the plug. So, CarterComics.com. Whether they be graded or raw, Carter Comics has got it all. They have a discount code. It's F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T, which will save you 10% on any on their website or any other four different eBay accounts that they have. Now, a discount code you can use over and over and over and over again. It's not a promo code. We're a promo code. You can only use it once. Fuck promo codes. It's all about them discount codes, baby. So there you go. CarterComics.com. Be there or be there. Other than not saying the word Freaknet, that was pretty solid, bro. I said Freaknet. No, you spelled it. I said Freaknet. I did say it. No, you didn't. We're going to listen to this back. We're going to. You can't. You can't because what, cause what you said was using the discount code F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T will save you 10%, which, hey, it's not. I'm happy you spelled it out. Other than not saying Freaknet, you did a good job. Also, I would also uh, like to add that the four different eBay accounts, links to those can be found on the homepage at CarterComics.com. CarterComics.com, Freaknet. Yeah, they actually it's pretty cool because they actually uh, do a lot of like uh, bundle advertisements on their Facebook page. Uh, they kind of like put like a bunch of Thor comics and stuff together and all that stuff. And uh, sometimes those comics can be found in different places, whether it be the website. Like one's on the website, two of them's on this uh, eBay page, two of them's on this eBay page. If you actually reach out to them on their Facebook page or their website and tell them you want to buy this bundle, then they will give you a deal then, and you can pay that way. Still using the discount code to save 10%, uh, so you don't have to say you're going to purchase from here, from here, from here, from here. It can be grouped all together and sold that way. So just a little footnote for guys who don't know that. Um, this coming Saturday, October 7th, is PPW and NAW Presents Ring of Horrors. Uh, doors open at 6, bell time is at 7, adults $10, children under 12 are 5. This venue, uh, this event is happening at the Holman American Legion, post 284, 
in Holman, Wisconsin. A few matches that have been announced. Uh, first one is, uh, well, I guess they're going to do the uh, Champagne Room with Pain and Pleasure. So they're going to have that little segment. Their guest is, uh, I don't have anyone else for guest yet. You did shit. Uh, so here we got the uh, PPW Cruiserweight Championship uh, on the line as champion Crazy Scott goes one-on-one with Johnny Cass. Uh, we have uh, the NAW North American Championship match uh, to determine the champion. Uh, it's going to be JT Simmons versus Gemini versus Casey Jackson, a triple threat match. We have the NAW Heavyweight Championship match with Justin Thunder going one-on-one with the champion. I want to say that's Beaumont. I'm going to say that's pronounced right. It could be Bonet. I don't fucking know. But Beaumont sounds better. PPW Vision Championship match with Craw Daddy Rod Hooks on one-on-one with Big Homie. Yeah, that's a Wisconsin thing. PPW Tag Team Championship match. We got uh, John Morrow and Onyx go one-on-one with uh, the champions, Pain and Pleasure. And I believe this is going to be your main event. It will be the PPW Heavyweight Champion, Angus McDuff, putting the title on the line against Sin. Okay, guys, make sure you check out uh, PPW and NAW presenting Ring of Horrors. That is going to be this Saturday in Holman, Wisconsin, at the American Legion. Doors open at 6, bell time is at 7, adults $10, kids under 12 or 5. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. 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 Oh, we got one twenty. Yeah, we got time. All right, let's put. Uh, let's let's pay, oh, wait, let's do fast lane real quick. You know, we'll fantasy buck. Anyone has a match card up for fast lanes or no? Uno momento, por favor. Don't worry, I'm doing it. You fucking you know, sit there and continue to do nothing. I'm do. I'm get. I got it. Got it. Too late. I right, got it right here. Oh damn. You both. Uh, Oh damn! Oh damn! <laughs> I love Dad. I miss him. All right, Judgment Day is going uh, tag team match. Judgment Day versus Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Nubby. Ah, oh, shit! This, they're going to do the typical thing. It's going to be Cody and Jay Uso. Pac Man. Judgment Day. Yeah, I'm going Judgment Day too. Uh six man tag, uh Latino World Order, Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar, and either Joaquin Wild or Cruz del Toro. Going up against Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Pac Man. Lashley and the Street Profits. Uh Nubby. Uh, the Latino World Order. Yeah, I'm going to Street Profits and Lashley. Uh, we got Eo Sky versus Asuka versus Charlotte in a triple threat match for the Data E Women's Championship. Uh, God. I pray to <laughs> God it's not, I pray to God it's not Charlotte, but I'm going to go Eo Sky. Who's the champ? Say what? Uh, Eo Sky's the champ. Eel Sky's the champ. Yep. Asuka and Charlotte, and they're in a triple threat match. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go, Nubby. Eel Sky. Uh, Eel Sky. God, you're slowly dying. Uh, John Cena and LA Knight versus the Bloodline. Uh, Nubby. John Cena and LA Knight. You want Pac Man? John Cena and L.A. Knight. Yeah! <coughs> God. Crap a name. Uh, Cena and L.A. Knight. 
And as of right now, the last match to be announced is the last man standing match for the heavyweight title. Seth freaking Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Pac-Man? Rollins. Nobby? Rollins. You know what? I'm going to go Shinsuke. Why the fuck not? I'm sure there's going to be more matches added, but this time, when they are, let's keep uh, let's keep each other accountable and do uh, you know, take a gander at that maybe on a Friday night. How dare you make sense? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pac Man, you said you have the notes for the fancy booking. I do from right. uh, oh, there it is. Aha. Right, so we can our last match real quick. Okay, so we had, for the Suburban Championship in a ladder match, we had Gunnar Brave versus James Creed versus Axel Rico, which James uh, Creed won. Women's tag team match between Sky Blue and Missy Kate versus Renee Van Peebles and Chalance Royale, which RVP and Chalance won. Uh, Four-corner strap match between Muggsy James and Travis's best friend, Matt Holiday. Which Muggsy won. For the ta- a tag team match between Youth Gone Wild versus Those Damn Coyotes. Uh, Those Damn Coyotes won. A women's championship match between Evil Sierra and Shelly the Bombshell uh, versus Logan Bator. Uh, Shelly the Bombshell won. Uh, in a showcase match, Paulie Tomaselli and Acid. Versus EJ Jensen and Carpenter, Pauly and Acid won. And for the JFW Undisputed Championship, 30-minute Ironman match between Christian Rose versus Joey Avalon, and Joey Avalon is your JFW Undisputed Champion. Wow. I So, so I copied this from my other notebook. Uh-huh. I can... I did not... Oh, wait, never mind. I did attempt to write Rose, but I forgot the E. <laughs> Who, who's that, Christopher Ross? Oh, I just put a Ross. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, I honestly, dude, it's been so long, and I wish I had that paper from me because I did not remember any of that card whatsoever. And I forgot to put Gunner down. Yeah. All, All right. right. Back, man, real quick, send, send that back to me, man, so I have that. I got you. Thanks, man. Um, so, uh, Pac-Man, you're in charge of uh, promos and shit like that. So what kind of promos from that show are we going to bring on to this show? So I think we'll have a rematch, or Christian Rose asking for a rematch against Joey Avalon, which Damien Saint will grant. Can I file a motion to fire Damien Saint? Can't after the first show, bro. You can't. Oh, what is this? 2K fucking 23. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, also, Jimmy Hart's going to become like the fucking devil or whatever uh, SmackDown vs. Raw that was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Good times. All right, so Christian Rose is uh, challenging for a rematch. Is that a, is that a opener, a show opener? That'll be for the main event. That'll set it up for later on in the night. Okay. So, so is that opening the show? Or That'll that, that that promo will open the show. And that's yeah. involving uh, with Saint, right? Right. All right. Okay, now you can decide if you want Saint to make a, another decision on this match that I'm gonna I want to book. Okay. So okay. I'm taking a an idea from Elite Pro back in the day, but I'm gonna make it a twist. Okay. So it's gonna feature six women. Um, there it's gonna be a six women tag. Now the one to get the pinfall. 
would normally sit out. And the one the girl that she pins would be eliminated completely. And then the four that are left will compete in a fatal four way to uh face the person that won the the six women's you know, six person tag. The trios match. However, I'm going to make this a twist. The one who gets the pinfall in the trios match will actually be the number one contender for that night, the same night in the main event. Or later on in the show, because apparently Saint is making other decisions here. Okay, so then... Whoever wins the trios match goes on later in the night to face the women's champion. He'll make that announcement as well, and then the first, and then we'll go to the first match. I'm I'm fine I'm fine with that six man tag and everything, but I'd rather the title match be at another show, like a next month or something like that. Well, because well, uh, well, here's my, here's my twist. Okay. But the winner of the Fatal 4-Way will get the next title shot, which will take place next month. Okay. Yeah. Do we want that to be the opener? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who are, you, who, who are we booking for that? So it'll be Sky Blue, Mr. Kate, and Sierra on one team. Again. Right, now, keep in mind, we're trying to make this as realistic booking as possible, so can we get Sky Blue? We got her last time. But did we book this before or after she was signed to AEW? It was after she was signed, I think. I was yeah. on that show, but I think it was after she was signed. Okay, so it's Sky, Sky Blue and who? Uh, Miss Kate and Sierra. Okay. I'm one against Renee Van Peebles, Shalance Royale, and Logan Von Tour. Who's the last one? Logan Vatour. Gotcha. Yes, I kept all the girls from the last show. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. Do you get all the rules now? No, dude, I didn't follow one thing you fucking said. I just, <laughs> I just agree with you because I'm sure it makes sense to you. So the six-man tag, the first person who gets a pin sits out. Would no would normally sit out and face the winner of the fatal four way. Okay, but I'm I'm changing it because okay. I can't. Okay, run through it. Run through it again, so so I understand this right. Okay, so in the trios match. Yeah. The one who gets when, the when pen- you when you say trios, you're talking about the six the six woman tag. Yeah. So call it a six woman tag. I like saying trios. I that understand way. that, but if you need, if you want me to understand, you got you got to use regular fucking lingo here. All right. So in the six women tag, thank you. Okay, now we're on one, board. The one who gets the pin, yes, will the title shot that night automatically. Automatically. Okay, and the person who gets pins eliminated completely, and then the, then the remaining four have a fatal four way for number one contendership next month. Yes. Okay, okay, I'm on board then. So, who's winning it? Who's getting pinned? Well. Well? Pac-Man. You decide. So, remind me again who the competitors are. Sky Blue, Missa Kate, Sierra's on one side. RVP, Shalance Royale, and Logan Von Tours on the other side. Um, no, it's, it's a straight-up six, man, so one team has to pin somebody from the other team. Right. Gotcha. So I'm going to say Logan Ventur gets pinned by Sky Blue. Okay, so Ventur loses, Sky Blue wins, and she gets a title shot for later that night. Yep. Uh, so then that leaves Missa Kate, Sierra, Shalance, and RVP in a fatal four-way for next month. That's right. How many matches are we doing on this card? Um, last match, had, last card had seven. 
Uh, we'll try to stick around seven. Yeah, we'll stick with seven. Uh, so two. So the second match would be this fatal four way. Uh, we'll, we'll stick with Pac Man. Who do you, who do you want to go over? Uh, for the four way, um, Miss, Miss Kate Sierra Shalance RVP. I'm gonna say Shalance. Okay. You know, I, I want to turn this more into a game, and I have some ideas. We'll talk about it off the air. Okay. Gosh, you got a really fucking cool idea. It might, be, it might just be cool to me. So it's long tip, right? Yeah. And that's for No Morgan Terrace for next month. Okay. So, we're def- so, for a lineup, it's, this will be a second like match two of them, right? Fatal four way, yeah. Fatal four way would be matched too, because I'm guessing that the fatal four way will still be about like a seven to ten minute matchup. Right. Can we do elimination? I like elimination fatal four ways. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. And plus, it kind of drags out a little bit. Elimination fatal four way. Fuck yeah. All right. What about one of our titles for match three? Um, I know we have the tag titles, TDC won. What, since considering Pauly and Acid won the showcase match last month, what about TDC versus Pauly and Acid? I want, I'm, I'm fine with doing the tag titles, but I want to do it later. I don't want to do like a six man, a fatal four win, and four more people in it. I want to like do a one on one, uh, and that. I mean, I'm, does that make sense? Maybe mm-hmm. do a one on one after all that? Yeah. Yeah, that does make sense. So then it'd be like Suburban Championship? Yeah, let's do that. How many how many titles do we have? Four? Uh yeah. We have four? Uh this is match three. Yeah, okay. So suburban title match. So then I mean we kind of similar mindset. Muggsy won the four corner strap match. So why not put him up against James Creed for the Suburban Championship? I'm good with that. So Creed versus Muggsy. And then Creed's winning, right? Uh, yeah, Creed's gonna go over. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Because Creed, uh, tied his, tied, uh, Muggsy's, uh, boots together. And it looks like... <coughs> Perfect. Which Muggsy are we getting? Are we getting the family Muggsy, or are we getting, like, regular Muggsy? Getting the filthy Muggsy. From Wisconsin. Wisconsin Muggsy. Uh, so we do three, four, five, six. And so match four. Where do we where where do we intermission at? After match four, or after I'd say after <laughs> match four. After match. Alright. So four, five. Six, seven. I right, uh we need a regular non title match. And then we'll do we'll do a regular non title and then we'll do the uh the tag team, then the women's and then the men's main. So what kind of showcase can we do? Let's do two new people. You know, not from the previous show. Okay. I like it. Uh, Thinking on the fly here, ladies and gentlemen. What about, I, I like, J, we didn't have Jay Thunder in the last show, right? No, we didn't. We should have. Let's do Jay Thunder. I like Jay Thunder. Thunder. So we need a heel for Jay Thunder. Damian Gray? <laughs> we don't have Nick Diamond. Oh, we don't have, yeah, Nick Diamond. We do Diamond with, uh... With his new uh, chick. With Miss Larkin. Yeah. She could be in uh, line for a future title shot, too. So. Yeah. Way to introduce her with everyone. All right, cool. Uh, who do you guys want to go over? Or what makes more sense for somebody to go over? Um, I say... Do you have Thunder Clean or, you know... Fucking diamond dirty. 
Diamond Dirty via the hairspray Miss Larkin carries around. Assuming uh, she that sort of thing. We could make it, wouldn't they? Right, or she's taking a selfie and she has the flash on and flutters fucking uh, Jay Thunder, blinds him. King, King of the Ring. Yeah, Thank Yokozuna. You. There you go. All right, so intermission. Sure, me shown. Uh, any promos? Uh, any promos, uh, Backman? Uh, youth gone wild, being pissed about losing to the Coyotes, and then they kind of sit out there and watch everything go on. Because I have something in mind for this. They for always the, have something in mind. So. We go back maybe to the tag team title uh, between Paul Lee and Acid versus TDC. And then it is a no contest because um, Youth Gone Wild jump both teams. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> so no contest. And then Damian Saint comes out to make it a triple threat for the tag team titles next month. Well, let's build to it. Build maybe, to it. maybe next month we'll do like Youth Gone Wild versus Poly and Acid. Like we'll build it out for like a few months and like kind of like have those three, you know, or like at least another month away. Yeah, makes totally. sense. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I, gotta, I don't. I don't want to build a lot of like you know like. Tension now, and then next month it's like paid off. Yeah, we just yeah. need to yes. beat down, and then it goes away. Yeah, that or makes sense. That does make sense. sense. Mm-hmm. Makes the people wonder what's next. Mm-hmm. All right, so six is a uh, bombshell versus uh, was it sky blue? Yep. Uh, Shelly retains mm-hmm. via a distraction by Logan Vatour since she was the one that was pinned. Mm-hmm. A lot of chicanery tonight. Yeah. So it makes it exciting. All right. And now we're doing the main, uh, there's a rematch for the first one, right? Rose and, uh, an Avalon. Yeah, there we go. Who's our Who's our champ? Joey Avalon. Avalon. Joey Avalon's our. Okay. So, I would say Joey goes over via shenanigans. What if he went over because like a like a double like disqualification, like. They wouldn't break up. They just got battling. Or they, they, to like, you know, they, or they battle to the back, count out ten. Or if we, we get, or if we get the lunatic Christian Rose, he accidentally strikes the ref and gets disqualified. You could do that. Shows yeah. the ref off. I guess it would kind of be basically the same thing to happen when the Bucky Collins match or whatever, but. Yeah. It's always, I mean, fucking after this business is recycling old ideas, so. There we go. Awesome. Cool. All right. Who wants to recap the, uh, the card? I shall. Go, go for it. He shall. Aha. I see what you did there. Aha. All right. So the show started with, um, Christian Rose, not too happy about losing his match last show and uh, not becoming champion. So he calls out uh, GM Damian Asshole, I mean Saint, um, <laughs> to prepare the rematch. And <clears throat> Oh, real, real, real quick, well, no, before we continue, either one of you, if you have it in front of you, uh, remind everyone who our commentators and announcer is. Our commentator is our Steve Aaron and Nick Swink. Announcer is John Bullard. And, we are uh, in the middle. What's that? What? We are in the Midlow Dome. Midlow Dome. Midlow Dome, that's right. 
Right. Straight, exclusively Midlothian. Yeah. Yeah. We will right. branch eventually once we get more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we got, we got to make a, a name for ourselves in one place where people are known to find us, and then when we need to expand, we can do so. Sorry, Nubby, go ahead. So Saint comes out um, and pretty much um, yells at Rose, but still gives him his uh, title rematch. Then in a uh, six women number one contender with a twist match, if you will, I called it with the twist because I like twists. We had a six women tag match to start off, which featured Sky Blue, Miss Kate, and Sierra taking on RVP, Chamonte Royale, and Logan Von Tour. Now, the one who gets the fall is number one contender for that night, and it ended up being Sky Blue pinning Logan Von Tour. So she would face Shelly later on for the title. So now it's a fatal four-way between Miss Kate, Sierra, RVP, and Chalance, and Chalance picked up the big victory. By eliminating everybody. Oh. Then, for the Suburban Championship, we had Filthy Muggsy taking on James Creed, and who was the champion, and James Creed won. Jay Thunder took on Nick Diamond with Miss Larkin. Uh, Nick Diamond uh, wins via Hairspray by Miss Larkin. Intermission happened and uh, 50-50 raffle, all that stuff. I won it. No, you didn't. Oh, no, that's right. No, that was my twin brother, yeah. evil twin. Yeah, fucking uh, Nisar won it, but brought up the wrong ticket. <laughs> that, that happened at WrestleTopia, by the way. Shout out to Nisar. Wait, I almost he, win something. Yeah, he almost won? Yeah, he thought he won. They brought it up to Dude, I felt so bad. Sign up. I felt so bad when they were auctioning off the, uh, I think it was like a canopy tent thing uh, that they were raffling off for the uh, charity. I think they had to pull like five tickets for somebody to finally win. Mm. Fantastic. Oh, man. Then um, Youth Gone Wild came out. They wanted um, a title shot. Um, cause they were pissed that they didn't win last month. So they sat out in the crowd as Acid and Polly Tomaselli took on those damn coyotes, the tag team champions, which ended up being a no contest because Youth Gone Wild decided to stick their nose in the business that didn't belong and beat the holy hell of all of all four of them. What happens next time? We don't know. What's Damien Saint Asshole got to say about that? <laughs> then Shelly the bombshell Benson the women's champion took on Sky Blue Shelly wins via distraction by Logan Vatour and yeah Shelly beats Sky then Joey Avalon retains against Christian Rose because Christian Rose uh, went crazy again and beat up the referee And that is the match card for this uh, version of, what is this, Jeff, Just Freaking Wrestling? I think so. Yeah. Solid, it. Okay. solid match yeah. card. Solid match card. Solid fucking bucket. Solid fucking bucket. I think, I, I, I sit on there. I think what I want to do with this when we do it is uh, I'll get like a, like a little cup or something. And I'm going to throw in like scenarios into it. Though, like I'll, we'll pull it. We're doing bookings, and, like, we'll come, like, there's, like, one thing that's, like, resolve or fix in the show, like, champion couldn't make the show, or, you know, somebody showed up without their gear, venue uh, had, you know, venue can't, you know, can't use the venue, shit like that. That's yeah. been, that happens. Right? Real shit that happens, yeah. Oh, man. You know, that's uh, hard. It's hard booking. Yeah. It is. Uh, is there anything else wrestling related we got to talk about? Um, not that I know of. I don't think so. I think we're I good. Think. Mm, anything? Just that Damian Gray is a punk, and uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. What we got next week, guys? Rocket Pro. Yeah. Okay. Air W. 
Okay. And Power Dream- results. Maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah. And Dreamwaves next week, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Isn't there a, is there, isn't there a, like a Wrestle League show or something? Not, not Wrestle League, but like, uh, when, when's that IPW haunted Halloween thing? That's on the 21st. That's, That's uh, 21st. okay. Called, uh, um, Nightmare on Chicago Street or something. Gotcha. A special, special thing they do in Elgin and IPW will be, uh, putting on some Halloween type matches, but IPW will still have their regular monthly show at the end of the month. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I thought there was like a Wrestle League uh, show coming up or something. I think there is. Uh, Rise of the League. That's not it. Wait, is this the right, is this the right Wrestle League? Homewood Auditorium, October 21st. Wow. That's going to be an uh, interesting night. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is that? A night of live pro wrestling full of high-flying, hard-hitting, quick-paced action with a Halloween theme. Well, apparently there's uh, wrestling at the Ravens Room at Red Line in Chicago uh, this Saturday. I have no idea what it is. Interesting. This Friday, Halloween Hellfire at Redline. I don't know what that is. All right. Anyway, I, think, I think that's uh, Wrestle League as well. They've been. I think they're the ones doing that. I gotcha. believe. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Power Hour, <laughs> usually. Yeah. Speaking of Power Hour, this week they have Roller Derby esque. Yeah, I saw that. So that should be. Was well, was, will be on. It's like what coaches and uh, I think minor minor league roller derby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Minor league roller derby. Yeah, the ones that kick our ass. I'd let them. Make sure you guys check out uh, the Power Hour every Tuesday night. Uh, they they release late, so if you don't catch it Tuesday night, you know, do it Wednesday morning on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, LIM's next week, right? LIM's this week. Oh, you're doing it this week. We are back this week. Uh, our suspension has been lifted for swearing. So watch out for that podcast censorship commission, guys. You really got to be careful of that fucking shit. But um, we are back from suspension, and we're going to be talking about Darkness Falls. Um, we're going to also talk a little bit about, you know, what's the fallout of all of that. Gabagool doesn't sound too happy. He missed the podcast where uh, Danny had allegedly used the F word too much. Uh, so, um, you know, what is he going to have to say coming back to all of this? Smiley you know, McGee. Oh, yeah. If Danny, if Danny would just eat some more Hawaiian bread, he would not be saying the fuck word all the time. Uh, he needs to stop saying the fuck word. He needs to eat more. I, I You know... The Hawaiian bread might, you know, with him, I feel like even Hawaiian bread or no Hawaiian bread, that kid's got no filter. And, It'll you know, they'll be, well. and he's defending that LIM ch- beer drinking championship against Tony Gabagool on the 14th. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens between the both of them on the show going into yeah, their. What, what are they doing? Fence. What are they doing? They're, 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 they're drinking beer and making a triangle or a pyramid or whatever. Oh, you no, know, the Beer Us Tower, it's called. Everybody's going to have their own personal stack to uh, of of beers that they drink at the show. At the end of the night, whoever drinks the most beer is the LIM beer drinking champion. You will record it, right? I I don't, be uh, It'll be in the vlog. If... If he's putting the title up against Gavin Gould, but everyone is entering, oh, I'm just saying, win. I'm just, I'm just giving general rules for title defense. But who's doing it? It is Mister Tony Gavin Gould. Oh, it's just them two. Just them two. Yeah, it makes sense, you cowards. <clears throat> but, but it'll, but, but you know, lovely intoxicated podcast returns this Wednesday or Thursday. When we, yeah. whenever we decide to post it, but it'll be up later this week. Whenever you decide to post it, pretty much. 
That's yeah, that's uh that's professional. Hell yeah. yeah. Guys, make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, just by searching Just Freaking Wrestling as a JFW podcast. And of course you can listen to our show when they are released on Wednesday nights pretty much. Or the live streams, usually on Sundays. On either iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Player FM, Alexa, wherever you listen to your podcast. Wherever you do listen, make sure you do subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. It's on YouTube too. Or the uh are we ever get do you think we should book the uh Alpha Zeta Zeta? I wouldn't mind, but they just got to lose all the time. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, they'll lose to the L.I.M. <laughs> treated. Uh, listen to uh, uh, listen to us wherever you do get your podcast. Like I said, do subscribe, rate, review us wherever uh, that is on your uh, your podcast platforms. Uh, guys, that's it. I believe we can. Ring the bell on this episode. Perfect. As always, I am Travis Dick. And I am Nubby, the amazing turtle, Kawabunga. And I am PX Pac-Man, the podcast pop of Mr. 100%, Mr. Something or Another. Shut up, Santino. And oh. thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW Podcast. <laughs>